you've got a question, the voices of res in our hair. Oh, plastics. Plastics is an SPE sponsored podcast. Hey, girl, how's it going? Hello. Look at you with your ascot and everything. Well, it's finally cold enough. Mm, that's true. You can't really, that's not really a summer weather outfit. Let, uh, let Danny know I'm rocking the ascot today. He's going to be very jealous. You know he is. I know. I know. Your husband loves a good ascot. <laughs> he really does. <laughs> All right. Let's keep it safe for work here, ladies. <laughs> 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 um, so, um, I am Mercedes Landazuri. I'm a design application leader, Techmer PM and on a few boards in, uh, in SPE. And I am Lindsay Nebel and I'm a plastics engineer. I'm doing something. <laughs> it's been a day, um, at Tech Tank and Erie PA. And I'm the vice president of membership engagement on the executive board, plus some other stuff. <laughs> <laughs> SPE. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and with our powers combined, we are plastic, the voices of resin. That's us. That's us. Um, so we have a podcast that's sponsored by SPE. Uh, as Lindsay mentioned, it's uh, released once a month, uh, the first Friday of every month. Uh, you can find it um, anywhere you find your podcast. Just search Plast Chicks. Um, no I. No Not I. Plastic Chicks. But you're, you're free to say it, Plastic Chicks. You can we say will. it. We will only correct certain people. I love a good extra syllable. Um, and uh, you can also find these live uh, live broadcasts that we're doing on uh, SPE's YouTube channel, um, which if you just go, if you Google YouTube and for SPE, the number four SPE. Or plastics. Find. I doubt there's a bunch of other random videos. I think there's there. one plus other plastics. Oh, yeah. It's been a long time it ago. Was, it was actually about chicks and plastics using some kind of biopolymer or something. Yeah, ours is a little less chicken related. <laughs> a little bit less, a little bit less. No, so just less. I do have a, a chicken ascot that I, some a rooster ascot that I sometimes wear and I have a, a new um, chick tie. So I'll be wearing that at some point, okay. but okay. yeah. Anyway, um, uh, today we have with us um, Justina Sanchez. She is product safety engineer at Tuve Sud. Um, hope we said that somewhat so right. Germany. Yeah, you did. <laughs> Great job. <laughs> um, and uh, hey, thanks so much for joining us, Justina. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. Yeah. So uh, we're really excited to have you here. And for those um, that don't know, which is pretty much everyone besides me, Mercedes and Justina is Justina and I met through uh, Society of Women Engineers. So branching out from the, the plastics realm. And um, so Justina is not technically a plastics engineer, but we, we made an exception for her. We allowed her into our world today um, because, um, well, go ahead and introduce uh, yourself and kind of give us a little uh, heads up on what your job is. All right. Uh, my name is Justina Sanchez and I am a product safety engineer at Tube Suit America. Um, we do, uh, I do electrical safety testing on products before they go to market. Also, uh, environmental testing and, um, our worlds do collide a bit. We do do some testing on plastics and have to make sure that they are appropriately rated for the use in which manufacturers are using them for their product. So, um, we do kind of work in a, together in a sense that way. Right. You can't ignore plastics altogether. We'll, just, we'll <laughs> right? be in your face <laughs> always. <laughs> Um, and so you didn't, you didn't actually start off as an engineer. You got into this um, path a little bit later. Can you kind of tell us your story? Yeah. So I actually didn't know I was going to be an engineer. I didn't know much about it growing up. Surprise. It wasn't until, you're right. <laughs> it wasn't until my early twenties that I started working at Tufsud about 15 years ago. Uh, I was a support. I was just an admin there. And uh, every day was kind of opened up to this world of engineering that I didn't know exist, but after a couple of years of doing my job, I realized the engineers had a really cool job. Uh, they got to go in the lab and get hands on and play with stuff. And I wanted to do that. So I had um, a really brief but life changing conversation with my boss and was just like, how do I become an engineer? <laughs> so he was like, well, you need a degree in electronic engineering to be considered. So literally, uh, long story short, went out and did it. And they have been very gracious to me and allowed me to just kind of keep climbing the ropes there. That is such like, uh, I, I, I want to say just a baller statement, just be like, yeah, I just went out and I became an engineer. 
<laughs> a lot of years in between there, but <laughs> long story short, yeah, that was the sum up that part. I just became one. It's okay. Gotcha. So you, so your, you went to your boss, and and now, and you worked with. You've been with Two Sued for like. I love saying that Two Sued. Uh, you've been making with her say it for, uh, for fifteen it, years though. now. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah, 15 and, years this year. And so you you were working for them as an admin when you were getting your education, your, your That's degree? That's right. That's what I got hired on through and then stayed as an admin. Uh, the, the first five years that I was there, um, after I graduated, they gave me the opportunity to move into the lab as a test technician. So to do a lot of hands-on and get familiar, responsible for all the lab responsibilities and maintaining what goes with that. And then uh, after five years of doing that, they gave me the opportunity to be a product safety engineer. And that's what I do now. Mm -hmm. So I've been doing that five years, almost six years now. Mm -hmm. And, and how, why to suit in the first place? How did you come to be an admin for them? Was it just uh, kind of random or? <laughs> no, actually my mother works there. My mother, uh, yeah. she's the one who got me kind of the interview in the first place. So she's our office administrator. And um, she, you know, was like, it's a great company at the time. I was just waitressing. <laughs> so she was like, why don't you get, at least give the interview a try and see how it goes. And uh, it just kind of took off from there. I love that. I love it. And um, I mean, you know, it's not easy, obviously, to be getting an engineering degree in general, but then getting an engineering degree while still working, you know, were they very, obviously they had to be some level of supportive. Were they supportive? you know, with your schedule or did you use your schedule and mon uh, modify your school schedule around work or work schedule around? Yeah. So I went to school at night and then even on the weekends and they were really supportive. In fact, they have like this tuition reimbursement where they would help pay for nice. part of it and working with uh, engineers in that field already, they were so helpful when going through school and needing help in any of my classes. We have some really <laughs> smart technically intelligent people. And so, you know, they were more than willing to help me. And um, a lot of them are still there, which is awesome. You know, we've been in this for years together. So it's kind of a, a little community family we have there. I can see that being a big advantage, have uh, homework help literally sitting at the desk next to you. I would in our lunchroom, <laughs> I would bring out my books and they, you know, have somebody sit next to me and explain how to, how to do these things and what they meant. <laughs> Oh, love and I'm it. sure they, I'm sure they loved it too. I'm sure they were so excited. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they get all worked up about it. That yeah. was, their, you know, that was their passion. So it was really great. I'm really thankful. Um, you know, it doesn't work out like that for everyone, but I'm really grateful that it has for me. Uh -huh. We have such a great team. And then even beyond that too, you know, um, I mean, I know a lot of, a lot of, um, in, you know, the field of plastics engineering, um, a lot of the, the people at the six schools really that most people, most people go to specifically for plastic engineering they'll they'll do internships but it's really cool that throughout your engineering education you got on the job like experience like and and had um i'm guessing you know specific things that you could take back every day and understand you know right. um yeah oh, this That's is what's happening i'm not just reading a textbook i'm here experiencing this in a real yeah. situation how does this translate to the real world and being able to apply it Definitely. Yeah, that was huge. Yeah. It was a help for me. You know, I'm visual and hands on. <laughs> so yeah. that definitely helped. Definitely. Um, so you're active in um, uh, Society of Women Engineers, right? SDB. And then, or is it just called SWE? Lindsay, yeah, I know you're just sweet. So just sweet. Just, just sweet. swing. Just sweet. Yeah. And then um, women in, st you're a big advocate for women in STEM. You also have a young daughter. Um, do you expose her to your work? Uh, now it's going through, now it's three generations, right? But are you, because you're such an, a big advocate for women in STEM, because I've creeped on your Instagram, um, I've seen that you have- As we all do. <laughs> in some yeah. work activities? Yeah, for sure. I love being able to expose my daughter to the world of engineering and just opening her eyes up to that and letting her get hands on as much as she can. So I do win- uh, when I have the opportunity, bring her into work and let her get in the lab with me, see things, help me with setups, um, you know, safe things that she can do. She's nine years old, but she right now loves it. And uh, she's been around it for years. And 
uh, she says right now she wants to be an engineer when she grows up. So we'll see if that happens. I support whatever she chooses to do. But right now, you know, I like being able to bring her along with me everywhere that I go um, that is STEM related. You know, she went with me to the Society of Women Engineers conference. And um, that was a, a really cool experience for both of us. But it's I, I just love being able to expose her to the things that I wasn't at that young of an age. And mm -hmm. so, you know. Right. Yeah, no, that was that was specifically, you know, when I'd creeped on your Instagram and saw that, you know, Lindsay and I both have we both have sons named Henry. Lindsay copied me. She um, copied me. And we both <laughs> have a second kid as well. Um, we ha I've I've um, taken I've taken my daughter's been more interested, I would say. I've certainly when we're working, you know, virtually I've exposed them to more. But, um, you know, it was really, I think, and it was a shame that the the last annual technical conference that we were supposed to have in person um, SPE was offering, uh, a childcare service. Lindsay actually was, was the, the person who got that going. Um, Listen, I need a place for my kids to go. <laughs> yeah. It's exciting to see that, that some of these associations and some, some of these organizations hosting conferences are starting to offer childcare for specifically this reason. You know, you can, you can, you know, have, if your kid's too young, you know, maybe, maybe they're not going to be there the whole time, but you can have them sit in on a session here and there or, or, uh, yeah, or even, you know, walking the floor and just seeing the cool products out and, you know, just being exposed to like, oh, it's not just like dirty manufacturing, it's stuff we use every day. Mm -hmm. That is, I feel like a big eye opener, at least when I, you know, talk to other younger kids, my kids are too young, they, they're not there yet. <laughs> do you, so do you get the question when you're at, uh, maybe, maybe not specifically women focused events, but when people find out because you do travel, right, for work a bit. Yep. Um, yep. Two is a pretty big company. Um, do you ever get the question? This is one of my one of my pet peeves. <laughs> what? Oh, your mom. What? What? Um, what does your daughter do? Who is she with when you're traveling? Do you get yeah. that question? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I do. Um, you know, it's funny because people don't always think when you walk in that you're the the engineer that's going to be doing uh, the work there. Um, but yeah, you know, I am grateful. I have a really supportive husband and he, um, if we can travel together, we do. And if we can't, you know, he watches her also, my mom's a huge support. And so I just kind of let them know, you know, like they, it, we're all in this together. It takes a team. It's a team effort for, <laughs> for all of us. So sometimes we need a little more help in, in you know, I do, or he does or wherever. So mm -hmm. I, I'm grateful for the support definitely, but I love to bring her when I can. Yeah, absolutely. I, so I always, my go-to answer has become when I get asked that question, you know, where, where are your kids when, when you're traveling for work? So with their amazing dad, who my ex-husband, who, um, who ironically never gets asked that question. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I've had that in a, going along with the, you know, you don't look like an engineer. We have a, a guy out on the floor and he's very, very sweet. He's also, um, probably in his seventies or so. And he came up to me the other day and he said, do you have a paper clip? And I said, uh, I don't think I do. And he goes, well, what kind of secretary are you? And I said, I said, Lou, look around, look at all the parts I have in here. I said, I am not the secretary, I am the engineer. And then today I wore my glasses and he goes, you still don't look like an engineer. You look like a teacher. And I'm like, well, is there a look I would have that would make you think I'm an engineer? He goes, I don't know. <laughs> like, that's great. Yeah, that's, <laughs> he did, he did apologize. And he was like, I'm so sorry. I didn't mean it that way, but yeah. But yeah, I, I also had that. Uh... <laughs> it, it happens, unfortunately, you know, as the years go, go on, I am seeing that gender gap close. Um, but yeah, it's, it's definitely a real thing that we face as, as female engineers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And what, now you, you, uh, I, I wasn't sure, but you're, you're heavily involved in, um, an, an organization within your company, um, a women's network within your company. And it's, it's celebrated, I think a year in April. Is that right? Yeah. Um, about a year ago, a little over a year ago now, I, um, you know, introduced the women's network to Tube Sit America. And so since then we have about 15 different offices where all the ladies come together and um, we hold different events for them, you know, trying to add value to their career, to the company. Um, we just did a financial, uh, we had a financial advisor come on and give a presentation basically geared towards women um, and finances. 
you know, we've done the strengths finders. So that was just something I had the opportunity to champion and it has been really successful. Um, and so, yeah, we just won uh, an excellence in collaboration award. Wow. Uh, our CEO awarded us with that for the network. So that was really sweet, but That's it's amazing. cool. It's, it's great. Congratulations. Thank you. Yeah, we only have three women here, so <laughs> <laughs> we network together. <laughs> uh, so, you know, we were talking, you, you do a lot of the product testing. Um, uh, what are some of the projects you're working on right now that you can tell us about? Uh, so currently I am working on a casino gaming machine, doing the electrical safety for that. Uh, I just wrapped up doing some flammability testing on some plastics. It was Love some it. plastic tubing that's going to be going within a product. So we have to ensure if they're not properly rated and have those flammability ratings that are required, uh, we're able to give them them. So, you know, we'll do the flame testing and then based upon the results, give them uh, the rating in which they qualify for and then from there move forward. But, you know, it's important that they, um, that they are make sure that they're suitable for use in which the function that they're going to be using, whether it's housing, um, really high heat parts or uh, high current parts, high powered parts, or if it's just for the enclosure, we need to make sure that those plastics are durable and uh, can withstand some impact testing and all of that. Um, outside of that, I'm working on a soldering iron, uh, doing electrical safety on that, as well as a medical sterilizer. Um, just, we've got a whole wide variety of products that come through our labs. So anything manufacturers want to sell for consumer use or lab use has to be approved, tested and certified to make sure it's safe for that use, that end product use. So do you guys, you know, when, if something were to fail, do you provide recommendations back to them or is that just kind of a, Hey, it failed. It's your responsibility to, you know, fix it. So throughout the evaluation, wherever they experience a failure, uh, we will write in a technical report and give point to the clauses within the standard that they're trying to obtain their certification for. So we'll, we'll point them to what areas they failed in, and then it's up to them to take that information and redesign or do what they need to do to bring it back for retesting. That would be kind of fun. Yeah, yeah so I'm not totally <laughs> in the dark. <laughs> I mean, I know I have a, uh, I, I've seen, you know, just in my experience, people, will either select a material that's, you know, not, not going to work for what they're looking at, or they select something that's kind of overkill. And then when they're trying to come back, they're looking at a different material. That's a much, you know, lower price point, essentially cheaper material. And then they're kind of skipping back through the safety standards or qualifications. They're like, well, it passed at this. If I just get this cheaper material, this similar grade, it's got to pass. It's like that it doesn't work like that. Yeah, those are the things that we, um, we hold tight to when we're doing the evaluations, we put together a list of critical components. And on that will be your enclosure materials or your plastics, as, along with the flammability rating and the standard that they are approved to. Um, and if at any point that changes, when we go in to do inspections, because we'll do annual or biannual inspections through all these production facilities, those are the things we're, we're checking to see that they're still using what was approved for use, because it could lead to a major you know, hazard down the road in which we don't want to be li liable for or want them to be liable for. You know, Everyone's got to okay. be safe in this. Yeah, that, that's a that's lot. <laughs> yep. What's been, what's been one of the most interesting or most memorable products that you have had the pleasure of working on? Um, the X, the body x-ray scanners that that's interesting. Um, like for the a, airport, you mean? Or? Yeah. Yeah. I'm actually working on a luggage scanner right now, uh, for the airports as well. The ones that scan your bags, but, um, memorable was the luggage or the body scanner, um, being able to go through that and just making sure that it's safe. Uh, also, another cool one was one of those photo booths that you'll see at uh, the malls or wherever. Those things are kind of cool. We've done the Oculus um, virtual gaming sets. Oh, cool. Uh, those kind of things. And so they're a lot of fun. You know, they come in and we have to simulate the real world use in them. And so we get to try them out and run them and then um, kind of push them to their max. <laughs> wow. So just like hanging out in the photo booth all day, just like taking as many <laughs> <laughs> bring your daughter in she's like it's 
pictures all day, girl. Go. Got it. I got it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We, we got to try it out. Um, also, you know, making sure that if for some reason it loses its ground connection, measuring the current at all accessible conductive points, ensuring that uh, if it lost ground for some reason, it's not going to shock somebody or, you know. That feels um, like a good thing. Yeah. <laughs> There's a lot of testing that go into it, but we definitely have to simulate the normal use in which they're they're used for. Who was the sucker that had to go through the uh, the body scanner? Because I would be like, no, no, <laughs> mom, can you come? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah that was me. <laughs> oh, was you? Ah, uh, <laughs> bummer. <laughs> I would be like, no, I'm not doing it. Let's find an intern. Give me an intern. <laughs> <laughs> at the time I was our test technician and uh. <laughs> I got the, the job and so it was it was fun though it was just it was definitely memorable there were things that happened that that just I learned a lot from <laughs> <laughs> that's great that's but they're great. safe yeah they're definitely <laughs> they're safe, safe. You know? <laughs> well that's all at the end of the day that's what we need to know <laughs> yeah are they safe uncomfortable yes safe also yes <laughs> So what, so what's next for you? You know, you've, you've championed this, this group within your company, um, you know, you're active in, in volunteer associations, community associations, and, and obviously you've, tra- you've, you've transitioned from uh, admin to test technician to engineer at your company. What, what's next on your horizon? Uh, so I'm hoping eventually to step into management and just kind of growing in those leadership skills. But for now, I'm enjoying where I'm at. Um, trying to give opportunity to our next generation of engineers. So I work closely with uh, SWE Next. It's the next generation of female engineers through the Society of Women Engineers. Um, I have a mentee through there and she's been great. Last summer, we had the opportunity to bring her on as an intern at Tufsud. And so, you know, she spent her summer there and I just like to, you know, we're in a position where we're able to expose them to these kinds of things in which they may not have been otherwise. And so I, I, like to give them that opportunity. So I like to work with, um, you know, the high school girls or even middle school, um, go in and teach them and show them, tell them what we do because I wasn't exposed to it. And so I want to ensure that, you know, these younger generations are, and just know it's a possibility. It's an option for them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's a, there's a lot of, um, missed opportunity. I think in those areas, I I know I wasn't exposed to any, anything engineering when I was younger, I, I literally, well, yeah, pretty, li- pretty much literally stumbled into uh, engineering. I fell into the technology room in my high school and they happened to have a small injection molding like press. Other than that, I don't think anyone would have pushed me towards it. It took all my own research, all my own investigation, you know, begging my mom to let me go to an out of state school. So um, weird. You're so weird. <laughs> <laughs> Look at me. Um, <laughs> I'm like, you know, I just, I think when you talk to like high school, but especially like middle school, um, I think the, the realization, um, you can kind of see it across their face when they're like, Mm -hmm. Oh, you can do that. Like, I think they're just taught engineers like math science. Um, they're super nerds. If you're a super nerd, that's what you can do. And that's all you can do. And like, it's, it's, so much broader than that. <laughs> yeah, definitely. You being able to see their face and like, oh, I never thought of that. I didn't know that was a thing, you know? <laughs> so right. it, it's nice being able to expose them and show them, you know, what we do, how we do and why we do. And just let them know if you want to do it, you know, you can too. Mm-hmm. Right. You don't have to be a super nerd. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah, no, you can like, be, but you, don't have to be. <laughs> yeah, you, can you be. might become one. You might become, you, you might just m- molt into it. I don't know. Yeah, no, I remember, and I think I've told this story with definitely Lindsay before, but, you know, growing up in San Francisco, at the time, we didn't even have tech. The main industry was hospitality. I mean, all my cousins worked at, at this hotel um, in North Beach. And and uh, and the first time I was exposed to, like, a factory of any kind, it was when I moved to Chicago. And I was doing a sales job, and I just accidentally walked in through the wrong door. And all of a sudden, I'm seeing, you know, these products coming out on the... <laughs> on the belt. And I was just like, whoa. And then from that minute on, I was just kind of hooked, you know, it took years for me to get into manufacturing after that, but it's like dirty Willy Wonka's factory. Yeah. Yeah. It actually was a fortune cookie factory, which funny you think I move, I move away from San Francisco. And then the first, (laughs) first company I walk into (laughs) in Chicago is, is a fortune cookie company, but yeah. Um, so do we want to play our game now? 
The California game? The California game. Yeah, we should do it. Okay, so uh, Justina, you're in San Francisco, right? I'm in San Diego. San Diego. I just came I back. No, my Francisco California cities. <laughs> Well, that's that's part of the reason I wanted to do this game. You know, Tecmer has has um, a, a plant. Our first plant was in in Southern California, but I feel like Lindsay, you and I, a lot of what we're exposed to in the industry is is east of the Mississippi. So I thought, especially being a California, San, a Northern California native, could be cool to play this game with a Southern Californian. Okay, so I'm going to ask you guys questions, and then you guys both have to give me like a short sentence on each. But um, I will answer nothing because I have zero connections to california all right <laughs> and you're just you're a san diego native i am born and raised yep you're cool all right <laughs> all right your thoughts on la justina Bus- we'll make you go first uh busy and congested but a lot going on um it's it's my true nemesis whoa as a, as a native san franciscan la is 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 to actually most San Franciscans see see all of Southern California as as the worst, with the exception of San Diego, which absolutely everybody loves. You can't not love San Diego. I'm with you there. <laughs> I lived in LA for a handful of years. Oh yeah. <laughs> um, how do you refer to San Francisco? The city. I love San Francisco. It's beautiful. It's I, there's a lot of culture there. What what uh, what name do you call it? Do you call it San Francisco or do you call it something else? San Francisco. Yeah. I call it the city or SF. These were all written by Mercedes. So I have zero, I have zero context for any of them. Well, I feel <laughs> just because I feel like a lot of people east of the Mississippi might call it Frisco. Never, please never call it Frisco. I don't, I don't think I have. <laughs> um, what word do you use for a highway? The freeway. Freeway. But now in Chicago, expressway. Yeah. Mm, fancy. Um, outside of manufacturing, what does the industry mean? Uh, I would say television and film is the first thing I think of. Yeah, I think of, um, restaurants, but that's a big difference between Northern and Southern California. I think of plastics. (laughs) Uh, (laughs) What... Is your best or the best California term? Oh, like slang? I guess. I don't know. You wrote these questions, man. Oh, that's right. Um, oh, my favorite. My favorite is janky. It's when I first moved to Chicago, like 15 years ago, nobody understood it. And I was like, really? Like nobody here says that. But now it's it's caught on because janky is a pretty solid word. Yeah, it's uh, quite known around here. I think it's funny that people who are not from California tend to call it Cali, but people that live here, uh, I don't always hear the, the, the people who live here calling it that. Yeah, I've called it Cali. That makes, <laughs> that makes you guys feel any better. Um, <laughs> what is your best earthquake story? I have an earthquake story, so I am in this group now. Oh, you do? You have your Puerto Rico earthquake story. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, you can answer that question too. Do you want to go first, Lindsay? Mine, okay, well, mine's not California, but when I was in Puerto Rico, they were having all sorts of uh, earthquakes, and I was woken up at 6 a.m. to the bed shaking, and I did not like it, and that's really my story, because I just, and I lived the rest of the vacation in fear. Uh, not the rest of the vacation. I did drink a fair amount to level off the fear. So. The rest of vacation in fear and in in booze. In booze, yeah. <laughs> Equal parts. Yeah. I have, um, uh, when I was a kid, uh, it was in the er- the big earthquake in San Francisco in 1989. Um, my parents were actually on the Bay Bridge at the time, which a section of it collapsed. Um, they were going, they, they worked in San Francisco and I was, we lived in Oakland at the time. So they would come home. They're on the Bay Bridge when it collapsed. This was before really most people had cell phones and all the phone lines were down, um, but they ran into uh, on the bridge. They weren't on the section that collapsed, but they were trapped. Um, They ran into uh, my, I was in daycare, my classmate's dad who had one of the first cell phones. Um, Within an hour, AT&T got that, or Pacific Bell, got the, uh, the phone line back up. He called his babysitter who picked me up she came to pick me up and, and I'd never seen her before. I thought I was being kidnapped. 
(laughs) And, and I thought I was an orphan because everybody, you know, thought that the whole Bay bridge collapsed and I knew my parents were on it and uh, just with the timing, but then like, you know, so then they had to drive all the way around the peninsula and um, they couldn't all the lines at the phone booths were so long, they couldn't get in touch with any of their siblings. So then uh, I finally from my friend's babysitter's phone called, um, called my aunt and got her to come pick me up. And she uh, tried to tell me that my parents were dead. And I was like, no, I talked to them. <laughs> wow. <laughs> So that was, that was my fun little earthquake story. I was an orphan. And then like having, like having my family try to having to like convey to me that I was an orphan. And then it was like, psych. Yeah. Your family's back. How about you, Justina? Best earthquake Um, story. So I, I, um, when I was younger, I remember on Easter, we had an earthquake being at my aunt's house and literally, uh, the ground looked like it was liquid. Like we were sitting in the living room and you see the carpet and it just kind of looks like liquid. And we were, everybody was kind of in shock and still, and it lasted a handful of seconds. And then that was it. But it just the visual of having the floor uh, not being stable, <laughs> not being, you know, mm. it was, it was crazy. And um, thankfully nothing happened and nobody got hurt, but yeah, it was, it was definitely one of those things that leaves an impression in you. Makes you want to prepare all the time. So were (laughs) eggs like hidden in the room where the, like were eggs then rolling along? Like (laughs) we had already had the egg hunt um, outside, but no. Thank goodness. Thank goodness. Right. Yeah. No, they were all collected in their baskets at that point. (laughs) Yeah. That's why I'll stick to my uh, blizzards. I'm fine with that. (laughs) Only fine with that. Um, what else did we have on our list? That's, I think that's it. And that's pretty much all we have time for. Oh yeah. Wow. I didn't even know. Just, just like right, right on. Um, just oh, Tina, thank you so much for joining us today. Um, really appreciate it. Um, and uh, excited to, to see where, um, where you and, and your daughter go next in the field of engineering. Yes. Thanks for having me. It was a we'll pleasure. be, we'll be stalking on Instagram. So <laughs> same, <laughs> same. This is fun. Thank you. <laughs> If you've got a question, the voices of resin are here. Oh, plastics. Bye. Bye.